We've now talked some about the intuition behind growing trees. And as part of that, we, we talked about how we might be able to uh, choose the right leaf to expand at any given iteration of our greedy algorithm. And now I'd like to formalize that with a little bit of mathematics. There are a variety of ways of making this choice of which leaf node to expand. The book talks about a, a couple of different uh, types of approaches. One is information content, and another word for that is entropy. These are ideas that originally came from physics, the entropy idea did anyway. And this was later adapted by Shannon when he started talking about information theory. The other approach is, is actually quite similar. Uh, it's called genie impurity. So, so let's work through some of the, the math here. So what Shannon means by information is uh, this idea of the number of bits that we need uh, to encode some sort of a sample that has come from a discrete random variable. And, and we're assuming here that we uh, know what the distribution is of the, that random variable. So, uh, and, and another, another word for discrete random variable is an enumerated data type, a probability distribution over that, uh, that type. So we have uh, an n different values. And we'll just call those v1 to vn. So if we have three different uh, colors, red, green, blue, then, then n would be equal to three. If we're flipping a coin, then uh, n is equal to two. Our probability distribution is just uh, indicated as p of v1, p of v2, all the way out to p of vn. And the information over this probability distribution, so p of v1 to p of vn, is uh, defined by a, a sum over the individual classes. And it's negative probability of vi times log base 2 of p of vi. And as we've said, this is also from the physics domain, this is called entropy. So let's do a, a quick example here. Uh, let's uh, imagine flipping a fair coin. Then we have n equals two, and our two probabilities, p of v1 and p of v2, are both equal to 0 0.5. So then the information that's uh, contained here, the number of bits we need to uh, communicate uh, which, what, what the result is of a coin flip is computed in this way. So we have minus 0.5 log base two of 0.5 and uh, the same thing repeated. And if you work through that, uh, that actually uh, sums to one. So if I'm flipping a fair coin, I need one bit in order to, uh, to communicate whether or not I had a heads or a tails. Let's assume an unfair coin now, where P of V1 is 0.7 and P of v2 is equal to 0.3. So I'm, I'm getting, say, heads uh, tw over twice as uh, often as I'm getting tails. And so the information in this case uh, looks like this, 0.7 log. Uh, base 2 of 0.7 minus 0.3 log base 2 of 0.3. And if you work uh, that out, 
then uh, it comes to about 0.88. And, and so what this means is I need a fraction of a bit in order to encode the, uh, the, the, coin, the result of the coin flip. And, and really fractions of bits, of course, don't make sense in and of themselves, but if I'm uh, flipping this coin many, many times, then I, and, and I have a sequence of, of results, then I need uh, 0.88 times the number of coin flips in order to communicate optimally this, uh, this sequence. Let's go to the more extreme case, so 0.99 and 0 0.01. And uh, this is on the order of, it's not exactly equal, it's uh, on the order of 0 0.08. So in this particular case, most of the time, this coin is going to turn up heads and it's only occasionally it's going to turn up tails. So I actually need a very small number of bits on average in order to communicate the result of, uh, of the coin flip. Okay, and, and bringing this now back to decision trees, and in particular leaf nodes, we, we talked about this idea that uh, the leaf node should be very pure, it should have either uh, all positives or all negatives in the case of a, a binary classification problem. And that really corresponds to this latter case that we were just looking at. where we, we have a very large imbalance in the number of positives versus the number of negatives. So, so we're striving for a tree that has uh, very low information in the leaves, and we want to stay away from leaves that have very high information content. Okay, so, so that's the general idea behind information. So now let's look at what happens with a tree. So, so I have some sort of a, a leaf node here, and, and I'm not going to say what, what's sitting up over here. So we're really just focused on the leaf node. And I have some number of positives and some number of negatives. And now I'm going to imagine taking this uh, node and introducing a question that has a, a yes or no answer. And, and we're going to sort this total set of positives and negatives into these two leaves. So positive here, I'm going to designate that as P1, negative as N1. So this is, so this is the one branch and this is the two branch here. Positives P2 here and negatives are N2. So it's the case that P equals P1 plus P2, and N is equal to N1 plus N2. Now this particular question, it might do a good job of partitioning the samples between the left and right branches. It could also only split off a few samples. And so it's important for us to be able to uh, know what the a fraction of samples is that is falling down this left branch. So this is uh, defined as uh, P1 plus N1 uh, divided by the total number of samples, P1 and, uh, sorry, P and plus N. So, so we have F1 samples falling down this uh, this left branch, we have F2 falling down the, the right branch. F2 is P2 plus N2 over P plus N. And it is the case that uh, F1 plus F2 is equal to 1 here. So in particular, F2 is just 1 minus F1. Actually, before we dive a little bit further, uh, let's 
draw one more picture here as far as capturing entropy. I'm going to kind of compress it into this space here. So this is, uh, say, P1 along this axis here. And this is entropy or, or information uh, along this axis here. Um, when P1 is equal to 0 exactly, then the information content is, is also 0. So, so it's right here. And, and likewise, if P1 were to be equal to, uh, to 1, let's put it out over here, um, the information content there is also uh, uh, 0. Uh, because if I'm getting all heads from a, an unfair coin, it, I don't have to actually communicate any information to say that I got a set of heads. But as P1 slides from 0 to 1, what the what information does is it goes up to uh, to a maximum at at uh, one half, and then it tapers off and and drops drops down uh, back to zero once we hit one exactly. Okay, so let's come back now uh, to this conversation about uh, this expansion. So what we're trying to accomplish here is. Uh, we here, in this case, before we did the expansion, we have a leaf node that has some distribution of positives and negatives, and we know how to compute that information content. Likewise, we can compute the information content of uh, these two here. So just I'm going to introduce just a little bit more notation here. So the the probability of positive, this is just p over p plus n. And, I, and I'm going to uh, define that to be uh, equal to, let's say, capital P. And, and likewise, uh, over here, p1, capital P1 is p1 over P1 plus N1, and we also have an, a notion of capital P2 over here. So we want to, we're going to measure the, the information content in this leaf and, and then ask the question of what information content do we have uh, in this combination of leaves after we do this split. And the, the general equation for this uh, looks like this. And, and this is our, our information gain. So this is our information in our original case here. And now with our new notation, I've got capital P and one minus P. And this is, of course, we're assuming uh, two possible classes here. And then on the uh, other side, we're going to take a sum over our two branches. Let's call this K. And let me go ahead and write in information of capital PK and 1 minus PK. Now, the way I've written things here we're in some sense making this assumption that uh, each of the two branches has an equal contribution to the, the total uh, entropy that we have in the combined uh, set of leaves, or the, the total list of leaves. However, imagine a scenario where we only have one sample fall, fall down uh, this branch here and everything else falls down the right branch. And, and if that's the case and, and uh, our total number of samples is relatively large, then the, the information content here is going to be very similar to the information content that we started with. But because we've split off one of our samples here uh, for, for the left-hand branch, our information content there is actually going to be uh, zero. However, that zero really suggests that things have gotten a lot better, but it's only gotten better for an individual sample. 
And, and so when we actually compute this sum, it's important for us to take into account uh, how things were actually uh, distributed. And um, that's, that's why we actually computed these uh, fractions. So let me write that in here. So we had this F uh, for the kth branch here. And if we were to write this out for, the, for our two branches, then we're left with I of capital P, one minus P, minus F1 information content uh, for uh, branch one. And then fraction two multiplied by the information content of branch two. So if, if F1 is relatively small, then the information content does not contribute very much to uh, this total sum here. And it's only as F1 starts to become something interesting that it actually compute, it contributes to that sum. All right, so let's, let's ask uh, some questions here. Um, so a small gain, and by small gain, we could include a zero gain. By a, a zero gain, what that means is that the information content in the new tree, the total information content, hasn't actually changed uh, relative to the original tree, or at least the subtree that we've been studying here. So one way that that can happen is that this distribution of uh, P1 versus N1 turns out to be the same, the, the, we, we have the same fraction of, uh, of P positive and negative cases as we did originally. So if we have that for uh, the left branch and the uh, right branch, what that implies is that uh, this I here and this I here have the same uh, value I here as, as we have on the left-hand side. And because F1 is and plus F2 actually sum to one, then this contribution here is going to cancel out this contribution. So, so we end up with a zero gain. Uh, or if there's a tiny contribution, then we end up with a small gain. Let me make one small adjustment to this uh, equation. I'm going to wipe out that F2. and write it in as one minus F1 to make it a little bit more clear that we have this weighted sum of values where the weights uh, sum to one. What the small gain implies is that we have no improvement in our decision tree as we're introducing this particular question. What a large gain implies is that the information, the, the weighted sum of the information uh, for these two branches is uh, smaller than the original information that we had. And, and so what this means is that the tr this part of the tree has done a much better job of separating the positives from uh, the negatives. So this really uh, shows improvement in separating positives from negatives. All right, so that, that's the intuition behind uh, information gain. And I encourage you to, uh, to study that uh, subject if this is uh, something that's interesting. The, the other approach that is commonly used, and in fact, it's the default approach for some of our uh, algorithms that we're using is uh, something called Genie. And, and you'll see the, uh, the terms Genie index or Genie metric. So remember above, we had a set of values V1 to Vn and associated probabilities P of V1 to, to P of Vn. What the Gini metric is for a given node is it's, it's a function of this probability distribution, not unlike what we 
uh, saw with information. And the definition is, it's a sum over all of the possible values. And it's uh, equal to P of VI times one minus P of VI. So this has a, a little bit of a, a similar form as we saw with information content. We don't have a log uh, in here, but it's a, a similar form. And if we also note that the sum of, over all of the P's is equal to one, then, then if you do a little bit of algebra here, uh, then this actually uh, reduces down to one minus the sum of the squares. For the case of n equals two, then uh, we can also draw this shape. So this is uh, P of V one here, and that's going to range from zero to, uh, to one over here. And our genie uh, metric is in the vertical. When uh, P of V one is equal to, uh, is equal to zero, then what that means is that we have, uh, let's ex actually expand this out. Well, for, for the n equals two case, then the, the Gini metric is one minus P of E1 squared minus P of E2 squared, which is E1 squared minus one minus P of V one squared. If P of V one is equal to zero, then this term is zero here, this term is zero. So we end up with a genie of zero. So that gives us this point here. If P of V one is exactly one, then this term is one here and this term is zero. So we have again, a genie of uh, zero. And, uh, and, and if we try values in between, we actually end up with a shape that looks very similar to uh, what we had before with, with information content. It, it has uh, sort of this uh, shape as well, where the center is at uh, uh, 0 0.5. So, so the Gini metric for this one node is a maximum when uh, when when the, uh, the the probability of being in one class versus the other is uh, is equal. Okay, so so now we know how to compute the Gini metric for a given node, and and now let's go back to this case here where we're going from one leaf to a, a pair of leaf nodes that follow a question. Oops, I have uh, swapped my P's and N's there. We have uh, P1 here and N1 and over here, P2 and N2. And, and again, P1 plus P2 uh, is equal to P, uh, et cetera. So, so we already defined a fraction that falls down each, uh, each of these two branches. Now the Gini score is equal to uh, the difference between uh, the Gini metric for this node on the left-hand side and the Gini metric for this piece over here, just as we saw with information gain. And, and the form actually looks very similar to what we uh, what we saw with with uh, entropy. So I'm going to go back to uh, having my capital P's. So this is definitely the two class case. And it is the difference between 
the Gini score of the original and the Gini score on the, the expanded side. Because we just have two branches, I'm summing over those two. And uh, this is equal to the Gini score of uh, each of the branches. And it's again weighted by the fraction of samples that actually fall down uh, each of the branches. Okay, and and for the uh, k equals two case, and 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 this this sum can generalize to any number of branches that you want. So let's expand this out here. So this is f one g of P1 comma one minus P1 and one minus F1 and then the Gini metric for the rightmost branch. Okay, so again, we have this scenario where uh, if by adding this uh, this question node that we end up with distributions in each of the two leaves that look very similar to this distribution here, then what that means is that this weighted uh, sum here is going to exactly cancel this out. So our Gini score is going to be zero. But if uh, this uh, Gini score for here and for here is a lot uh, smaller than the Gini score over here, meaning that uh, we've moved from, uh, say, the original Gini score, uh, we had a probability that sat, um, say, in this range here, and we've now moved uh, for branch, uh, for the left branch, we might have now moved to here, and the right branch, we've now uh, moved over to here. Then, uh, then what that means is that uh, this Gini score plus this Gini score, of course weighted by uh, this F1 term, is going to be a lot smaller than, than uh, what our original uh, Gini score was over here. So again, we have this scenario where small uh, score is no improvement. and large score is a big improvement in the distinctions. So the, the two metrics, this entropy metric and this Gini metric, uh, they're very similar in, in uh, form and shape. And, and really it comes down to an empirical question as to which one you want to be using. Uh, the, the Gini uh, score actually requires a bit less computation, and so things can execute a bit faster. Uh, what the Gini score does try to do is it tries to place the most frequent class uh, into one of the main branches. This is a little bit trivial in the case where we only have a positive and a negative class, is by putting positives, say, in the left main branch, the negatives are going to tend to fall uh, to the right-hand side. Uh, it, so it becomes much more interesting when we have more than the two classes. For information uh, gain or entropy, uh, this particular metric tends to give us a little bit better uh, balanced trees. And computationally, that can, can be better. And perhaps we're a little less subject to uh, overfitting. Uh, when we have that, that better balance. Okay, so that's a bit of intuition about how we measure goodness of a split. And, uh, and now it's time to talk a bit about the overfitting uh, issues that can come up and what some of our solutions are.